This is going to be a study on standing versus state. The subject of the Christian standing in Christ versus his state is something that will help you understand your salvation better. Your standing in Christ has to do with God seeing you as perfect and sinless ever since the moment you were born again. Hebrews 10.14 says, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. The moment you put your trust in the gospel, God sees you as perfect as the Lord Jesus Christ. However, your state is a lot different. Your state is how you are living at any given moment. And the born-again believer has two natures. He has a part of him that is part of the body of Christ, which never sins, and another part, his flesh, which still sins because it doesn't get born again. And if you look at Philippians 3, verses 11 through 12, Paul says, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. In Christ, Paul was perfect. His soul didn't have any sin applied to it whatsoever, and he knew his flesh wasn't perfect. Although he was perfect in Christ, he knew his flesh wasn't perfect and he still messed up at times and committed sin. And he even admits this in verses like Romans seven eighteen, where he says, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. So Paul reveals the two natures of the believer many times in his epistle. Or epistles and second Corinthians as he talks about how when a Christian dies the Christian will then be present with the Lord in second Corinthians 5 8 it says we are confident I say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord notice that this is referring to your state and not your standing uh, Paul a saved man was presently on earth and absent from the Lord that is, in the flesh. However, spiritually speaking, he was already up in heaven. He was already present with the Lord. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6 says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hast raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when it comes to your standing in Christ, you are already in heaven. However, when it comes to your state, you are still on this earth in a sinful body. And something else, when you are saved, you are automatically baptized into the body of Christ. And this has nothing to do with a water baptism. Galatians 3.27 says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. However, in the flesh, you later get water baptized to show what took place inside. So you have the spiritual baptism where you're baptized into Christ and then you are water baptized later. When it comes to your standing in Christ, you are baptized into Jesus Christ. Outwardly later on, most likely, you are water baptized and that has to do with your state. It would have to do with your discipleship and not your salvation because no one is saved by getting water baptized. And when it comes to my standing in Christ, I am an adopted son of God. When you get born again, you are adopted. Uh, Romans 8.15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So I'm an adopted son of God. And when it comes to my standing in Christ, I'm adopted. However, when it comes to my state, I'm waiting on the adoption. Romans 8.23 says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. 
So once I get a glorified body at the rapture, I am no longer going to have to worry about sin ever again. I'm waiting for the redemption of my body. When it will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when Jesus Christ comes to get us at the rapture. And here is why your standing in Christ is perfect. You have been quickened. You've been made alive. You've been born again. Only through this can you be perfect in Christ. Ephesians 2, 1 and 2 says, And you hath he quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So you see, before salvation you were dead in trespasses and sins. You needed to be born again and made alive through believing the gospel. You were an enemy of God and you weren't in Christ. And you definitely weren't a child of God. But at salvation, you were born again and made alive. You are no longer a sinner in the hands of an angry God. And John 3.36 lets us know the wrath of God abideth on the sinner. But now that you're saved, you are in Christ and no longer under his wrath. 1 Corinthians 12.27 says, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. If you're born again, you're part of the body. Before salvation, your standing was in your own wicked flesh with your own filthy works that weren't good enough. You were on your way to hell. Now after salvation, your standing is in Christ and you're on your way to heaven. So your spirit has been born again and that is your standing in Christ. The flesh is dead and you need to reckon it dead as Paul says. He says, I die daily. Meaning every moment you need to try your best not to give in to your sinful flesh. When you do give in to the flesh, you are serving a dead corpse. Your flesh is dead. Uh, Colossians 2.10 says, And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So your standing in Christ is perfect and complete. Uh, your standing in Christ is also perfect and sinless, because of the spiritual circumcision. Colossians 2, 11 through 13 says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So your standing in Christ is perfect because your soul and spirit have been cut loose from your flesh. Your flesh didn't get born again. It's still sinful. But when you sin in the flesh, it's not applied to your soul because of that spiritual circumcision. Before you saved, every time you sinned, those sins were applied to your soul because you didn't have that operation of God where he cut your soul loose from your flesh. And for this reason, your soul would have went to hell if you died with all the sin applied to your soul. At salvation, God performed an operation called the circumcision made without hands. And this is where he spiritually cuts your soul loose from your flesh. And now when you mess up and sin, those sins aren't applied to your soul like they were before you were saved. And this is one of the things that makes your standing in Christ be as a perfect saint of God. But your flesh isn't perfect and it will never be perfect until the rapture we put off this sinful flesh and get a new body. And this is what makes your state unequal to your standing is because your flesh is still sinful and it didn't get born again. We should try our best to get our state to resemble our standing as much as we possibly can. And if you are staying in unconfessed sin and giving in to the flesh, then your state isn't good, but your standing will never be affected by your state. It's completely different things. And you know that verse which the holiness crowd will always use against you to make you think you have to be sinlessly perfect to get to heaven 
In 1 John 3, 9, it says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and can, he cannot sin because he is born of God. So they'll say, if you're born of God, then you'll never commit sin. And that's what the verse says. But the new man inside you that came in you when you were saved, he's the one that doesn't sin. He is sinlessly perfect. It is what is inside the believer that is born of God. It's what's inside that's born of God, not your flesh. Your flesh doesn't get born again. It stays wicked until you get a new body at the rapture. And in 1 Corinthians 15, that's where it talks about us getting glorified bodies at the rapture of the church. It says, we shall all be changed. And all of the people who teach a changed life is required for salvation, who are looking for outward evidence that a person is saved, they need to realize the flesh won't be changed until the rapture. And until the rapture, you will be capable of any sin and capable of living like the devil unless you yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit. But not only this, if you're saved, then you are joined unto the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6.17 says, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You're joined to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. If you go to hell, then Jesus has to go to hell. If you are part of Christ and Christ is sinless, then the part of you that is born again is also sinless. And you are standing in Christ as a perfect saint. Your flesh, which has to do with your state, is not joined to the Lord. For the born-again Christian, in the sense of going to hell and suffering for sins, he is no longer responsible for suffering for the sins he commits, even after he's saved, because of his standing in Christ. Jesus Christ paid for all those sins on the cross. The born-again believer will suffer for his sins in this life while he's still on earth in the flesh. If he lives in a horrible, sinful state, then he is going to suffer in the flesh. Uh, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. His sin on earth doesn't affect his salvation, but it can affect his rewards and inheritance. And you know the verse in Revelation that men will throw at you to try and prove you can lose your salvation. In Revelation 21, 8, it says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire or shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And they will say, If you tell a lie, then you're a liar and you will go to hell and lose your salvation. But this isn't true. Our standing in Christ is perfect. God sees us as sinless sons of God. And a Christian may tell a lie in the flesh. But if you're a Christian, you're not a liar. The new man in the Christian doesn't commit sin. And the sins, like lying, aren't applied to your soul like they were before you got saved. And this is why it is possible for a Christian to sin and still go to heaven. The Bible talks about all men being liars. The Bible says, let God be true, but every man a liar. Your flesh tells lies. The new man in you doesn't lie. Uh, you have a standing in Christ and you have a state. They are two different things. You're standing in Christ. It's fixed and settled. It can never be changed. Your state, however, changes every day, every moment. If you're doing good today and living right, and then your state matches your standing more than it does on a day when you got in the flesh and did something wicked. Your flesh was not born again, and that is what you need to understand. Uh, the flesh serves the law of sin. Romans 7.25 says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. The Bible refers to it as the wretched man, the outward man, the old man, the natural man. And this sinful flesh won't be changed until the rapture. The new man in you doesn't sin. It can't sin. The old man, your sinful flesh, it desires to sin constantly. And Christians can give in to their sinful flesh just like a lost person. And the new man has the fruits of the Spirit while the flesh 
does the works of the flesh. And they are listed in Galatians chapter 5, things like adultery, variance, witchcraft, emulations, wrath, strife, heresies. It is possible for a Christian to commit these sins, but they won't be applied to his soul if he does commit them. And when a Christian commits the works of the flesh, then his state is unholy, wicked, and sinful. And if a Christian is living right and trying to do what the Bible says, then his state will be closer to matching his standing in Christ, which is sinlessly perfect. However, since our flesh is wicked, a Christian state will never be perfect until the rapture. But even now, when Jesus Christ sees me in the eternal sense, when Jesus sees me, when God sees me, he doesn't see my sins. He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He sees the blood of Jesus Christ. If I sin, he sees it, but he doesn't count it to my record. In the sense of eternity and me going to heaven, I have the righteousness of Christ applied to my record. If I continue in sin, then he will chasten me and cause me trouble on earth. But my position in Christ as a son of God never changes, and he is not going to put me in hell when I am a part of Christ's body. Uh, the sin I commit in my, in my sinful flesh does not affect my salvation one way or the other. My sinful flesh isn't going to heaven. The Bible even says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. I need a new body. Not only this, but the Bible says the Holy Spirit has sealed me unto the day of redemption. I'm sealed and no one can break my seal and nothing can take my soul. Our standing in Christ is that we are sealed unto the day of redemption and the devil himself can't break that seal. Nothing can touch my soul because the Holy Spirit sealed me the moment I got born again, the devils can't touch my soul. A Christian can't be devil-possessed in the sense that a devil is indwelling him and has a hold of his soul like he does a lost person. But a devil can possess his sinful flesh. And that is why the fornicator is turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. So my standing in Christ isn't affected by devils. But my state can be affected by the devil and devils. My, uh, the devil can get a hold of my flesh, uh, cause me to do even worse things than my flesh would naturally do. A person that stays in just wicked sin, a Christian who just watches pornography or does crazy things like that all the time, the devil's going to get a hold of them and cause their flesh to do even more wicked things. Uh, 1 John 3, 8 says, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. You have committed sin since you have been saved. So are you of the devil? No, your standing in Christ is perfect. It isn't the new man in you that's committing sin. It is your flesh. The old man commits sin. Our standing is made possible because Jesus Christ died for us and we got in Christ by believing the gospel. Our state is based on our walk with God, our walk with God from day to day or any given moment. Colossians 2 6 says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. You can believe the gospel and be saved. And walk in the flesh. If you walk in the spirit though. You won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. But many times what do we end up doing? Walking in the flesh. The Bible says in Romans six twelve through 13. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. If you yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, then your state isn't going to come close to matching your standing. If you yield yourselves unto God, then your state will be closer and closer to matching your standing in Christ, but you will never attain sinless perfection without a glorified body that you get at the rapture. Because Psalms 39.5 says, For man at his best state is altogether vanity, even at your best 
your flesh still sins. Your state, though, will never affect your standing, which is fixed, but it will affect your rewards in heaven. It will affect your joy on earth and your fellowship with God on earth. But since your position is fixed in Christ, your relationship as a son of God cannot change. And if you don't acknowledge your standing versus your state, then you can make the Bible contradict itself. You're going to end up frustrated and defeated. You're not going to understand parts of the Bible because it's going to seem to contradict. And you're not going to have the assurance of salvation because you're going to sin and then you're going to hear somebody say, well, if you did that sin, then you probably really didn't get saved. But if you understand your standing in Christ versus your state, then you're going to know that the sin that you committed after salvation does not affect your salvation. And Galatians 3.27 says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ has, have put on Christ. We have all been baptized into Christ at salvation, and that is our standing. But look at what Romans thirteen fourteen says. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Even though you have put on Christ when you were saved, practically speaking, you have to put on Christ in any situation, in any moment, from day to day, to keep yourself living right, so that your state isn't unholy and wicked. So if you don't understand standing in state, you're going to read Galatians 3.27 and say, well, I've already put on Christ. And then in Romans, you're going to see where it says, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's because in Galatians 3.27, it's referring to your standing that's put on Christ. And then in Romans 13.14, it's saying, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that has to do with your state where the believer has to put on Christ every day. To stay living right. And Paul talks to the Philippians about knowing their state. It says in Philippians 2.19, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. So he gets good comfort in knowing they're living right and walking with God. He knows it is possible for Christians to walk according to the course of this world. And just like Demas, Demas' state was unholy and worldly at one point. In 2 Timothy 4.10, it says, For Demas hath forsake, forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed into Thessalonica. However, even though his state was unholy, his standing in Christ was perfect as a child of God. 2 Timothy 4.10 shows us his state was wicked. However, in Philemon, verse 24, Paul calls him a fellow laborer, and his state is good at that moment. Your state changes. Your standing does not change, but your state changes. Your standing has everything to do with Jesus Christ and His righteousness. Your state has to do with you and your righteousness at any given moment, and that is why your works good or bad, have absolutely nothing to do with your salvation before or after salvation. The righteousness you have when it comes to your standing in Christ has absolutely nothing to do with your righteousness. It has all to do with Jesus Christ's righteousness. See, the moment you get saved, God gives you the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's what's on your record, not your own righteousness. And that's why Paul over and over again says... Uh, Works don't save. Uh, Romans 4, 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then he talks about being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish your own righteousness. Your own righteousness can't get you to heaven. You have to have... Jesus Christ's righteousness. The righteous things that we do after salvation, the only thing that is good for is staying in fellowship with Jesus Christ and getting rewards and inheritance and being a good testimony. But it has absolutely nothing to do with your salvation. 
Have you ever heard the song, He's Still Working On Me to Make Me What I Ought To Be? That song that says that, you probably sung it as a kid. God isn't working on the new man. That song shows us our sinful state because God's not working on the new man. It's already perfect. You have to work on the old man and beating it down daily. He's daily working on me to make me what I ought to be if I read the Bible and I do what I'm supposed to do. Then he can work on me and I can grow in grace. You need to be striving daily to get your state to match your standing. All of the men who teach a changed life is required are looking on the outside of the man, at the person's state. They don't realize they can't see the Christian standing in Christ. So the way God sees a person is different than the way a man sees a person. You see a person in his state. You're seeing a man in whatever state he's living in at the moment, which changes and it can be good and it can be bad or unholy. These people that are trying to judge someone's salvation by outward evidence, they can look at a person today and that person can have have had some tragedy happen or they're suffering from something and they're saved, but all that tragedy and the devil attacking them have, has caused them to go back into their sin. So the person who judges everyone's salvation is going to look at them and say, hey, He's he's not really saved because he wouldn't be fornicating, he wouldn't be drinking, he wouldn't be smoking a cigarette. But he got born again years ago, and at one point he was living right, and his state was good. But all those things happened to him, and he got back into the world, and he started sinning again and living horribly. But the person who believes a changed life is required for salvation would say he's not really saved while the person who believes the changed life is required could see somebody else and the person professes to be a christian uh, they seem to be morally good they're not cussing they're not watching dirty movies and all these things but yet they're not really saved they don't have the holy spirit inside of them Um, They're not spiritually circumcised, but yet the, the man will say, well, he's saved because he's living right. See, uh, the uh, righteous life can be counterfeited. A person can pretend to be a Christian, but then when they get behind closed doors, they do other things. They do bad things. Or... In their mind, they're sinning. The thought of foolishness is sin. They can have envy and strife in their heart. You don't know what's going on inside of a person. But I hope this has helped you understand your standing in Christ versus your state.